hello hello youtubers it's good to be back again well it's been a while and i haven't really put out content there for you guys um pretty much uh, a lot happening in the background um i relocated to a different country and i'm still trying to settle in so um i still do not have my setup yet i hope you do understand with me and thanks for all you subscribers um your support your likes i really do appreciate them um i will be picking up with the um birth suit series and then um, somewhere down the month or next month i have recorded several videos which will really intrigue you or some of which are around um, um wazoo building wise one um eks aws uh deploying the infrastructure with terraform and also building the application using kubernetes then um exposing services um, um so we can actually assess it then also a bunch of wonderful cool integrations which you're going to love i look forward to getting that video out for you guys okay so um for today we'll be picking up um pausing and pausing will be the i think the fourth or third video um in the birth suit series now why do we need to learn poison well poison is not a new technique as we do know it's pretty much aged basically what you're trying to do is you're trying to randomly inject sets of uh, partially constructed or arbitrary kinds of input which you call the force to see how the application is able to handle such inputs and most times the application can either break and we can see uh, uh, vulnerabilities like sql injection classic ones maybe buffer overflow cross site scripting and even command injection flaws if we force an application now um we'll be using burp suits obviously there are quite a number of other forces out there like the afl american forza loop pretty much dope one and there are also quite a number of other forces that you would want to check out but since we're looking at the burp series We'll be limiting this to burp suits so burp suits is got a forza now it's not called forza it is called the intruder in burp suits so we're going to look at how we can use the intruder to go after an application now we'll be using the mindset of a bug bounty hunter obviously so we we have been contracted to test this application it does mean that we pretty much cool to capture a request and try to maybe map injection points then go after the application by forcing it now um why would you want to force or why use burp suits to force now burp suit comes with the integrated html forza and we know um, um basically it's called the intruder which you're going to see up there we will see um the intruder right there which is what we're going to be using anyways now um what will this do in some basic simple steps first we need to intercept the http requests uh, so we'll be using our BWAP. I pretty much um, spawn a BWAP on uh, um, a container image of a BWAP, so which is what we're going to be using. And um, um, if you want to learn how that stuff work, I can actually point you to where I pull this image and also build a container off of it. Um, so um, next, we will um, use predefined um, or defined parameters and injection points, which we want to inject uh, as our forcing technique. Then we will select the payload, which I think a uh, professional, like I told you, will give us something. Then we can go after that um, application and start injecting or start pausing. Now, pretty much with the talk, um, talk let's get into some hands-on business and see how this stops pretty much work. So the first um, attack technique which we're going to be looking at is forcing for um, login credentials. Now, um, you can see right here, we've got the new user registration, then also the login. So we will be forcing for login. Now, before we can actually capture this, we need to be able to set birth suits to intercept. Now, there are two options. Option one, we can actually use um, something like a foxy proxy option two we can use burp proxy i'm going to be using option two i'll use the burp browser which will capture the request and actually replay i can forward it to the intruder and start doing the frozen so let's start our burp browser we can see under the proxy we have the browser so we will start the browser and um, i'm going to drag it over to the screen here we go with the burp browser so we will go to our url i'm just going to copy this here it's on my local hosts and I'll minimize this. So this is what we'll be working with. I'll just dress this pretty much, paste this here. And we can see that we have captured that um, login the PHP request. So what do we do with this? Um, over here, we can see it's letting us know that, um, yeah, yeah, Bob it, whatever, whatever, but pretty much cool with all the stuff. Let's see how we can take that request and send over to our intruder and start pausing. 
So we're going to try some random credentials here. I'm just going to try admin, then admin. All right. I will um, set the intercepts on. Then I will set the security level to low for a start. And I'm just going to log in. So we can see right off the bat, um, there is no form of encoding or even encryption happening. I can see the username and password that I'm actually entering. So I'm going to capture this request and send over to intruder. Over here on my intruder, I will see the requests. Now we can see there's a PHP session ID, pretty much dope, but we have the um, injection points like I didn't mention from the start. We want to go after the login and the password. These are the two areas we want to inject. So how do we go about this? We can actually um, clear everything else from the start. So I'm going to clear every point that has been marked and I'm going to just go after this point. I will add this. Then I will go after this point and add this. So these are my two points of injection that I want to actually go after. Now, if I want to go after these two, it does mean I would need some form of a technique that will allow me to be injecting into these two points. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Okay, so um, now we have this set up. I'm, I'm just going to clear this uh, first one. I think, um, my bad, sorry. I'm going to clear this. Um, I will just inject maybe B as the username so I can go only after the password. Then um, injection um, attack type, we have a bunch of them. I will be talking about this in details, but for now we'll be going with just the sniper um, because we want to snipe at this one point. Now for the payloads, we have multiple options. We can go with a simple list, um, which we can see here, right? The simple list. We have a bunch of other options. I'm going to stick to the simple list because the payload sets for me, it's just one point. Then we also have the options of um, maybe loading our own payload here. I can actually add payload. If I have probably type some pins and add them here, you can see that stuff works. Okay, I'm just going to remove this. Um, or I can add from a list. There are a bunch of other lists here that I can add payloads from. Now, the payload processing technique is also another thing which we need to look at. And also the payload encoding. We will touch both of them, but for now, we want to go pretty simple. Okay, since we're going after the password, we can simply add a list uh, password. And that should be it for that point. And uh, if we also look at the resource pool, now um, we have a lot that can actually do here. We can see at the basic configuration, maximum concurrent request is set to 10. Uh, that's the default resource pool. We can actually create some resource pool here if we need to create. Then also finally the options here, we've got a bunch of other cool setups that we can do here, like error handling, how we want this to behave if there happen to be an error, the request header types that we want to set, maybe attack result, how we want that presented, then also graphical match if we need to do that, and also grip extract, and as well as payload redirection if we have some other form of proxy. Okay, so we will look at all these and review them, we'll start the attack. Okay, now that we have everything all set, let's start this attack and um, over here we can see from our payload we see this is running pretty much fast and then um, we just completed the attack we can view all the requests that were sent the status the return 200 then also the length at some point we may be able to review the length as a way to sell out which of them is a valid request okay so um after spending time reviewing the results we can see that one of them stands out all the other ones returned um, 200 status code with the same length but this one returned the shadow length 502 um, and also the status code is 302 and probably if you've been following our video you'd have heard me mention the http status code over and over and um, we know if it's the 200 it is good then if it's the 300 seems like a redirect thing so looking at this it does mean that these seem like a valid authentication. Let's review the requests that were sent. We can see there at the below, the request was sent to the local host on 8080. Then um, the username is B, the password is bug. Then the response that returned, if you look at this, we can see that this returned 302 found. That's pretty much a good thing. Um, we will take that username and the password, which is a bug, see if we can actually log in. And there we go. 
this gets us into the application so this is pretty much the low security settings we've been able to bypass um, uh, we Post using a pausing technique within the intruder to get the username and the part or the password for this user. Now, what if we want to do the reverse? We can repeat the same thing for the user. In this context, the user would be our injection points. We already have a password. Let's say we stole the password from somewhere and we want to validate if that password is valid. We can propose that password against a bunch of user lists to get valid users will have that password authenticated within that application okay so this will be the first within the intruder set now next we will take this to another step let's see what we can use uh, maybe we can use a different technique to actually still carry out the same function okay i'm going to stop this here then in the next recording i will pick it up from here thank you for your time i hope you love the content please do like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next recording bye